what else? Gosh, because that sounds like a really interesting class. Yeah, it really is, honestly. It sounds like one of those curriculums that you could pretty much bring everything back to um, kind of scripture in a weird way. Mm -hmm. Because if I was teaching the class, I'm definitely not teaching the class. I just (laughs) literally pull out the Gospel of Luke and point to every time Jesus did literally anything and be like, here you go, do that, you know? I'm sure at a public university, there's a whole bunch of, you know, theory and and other stuff associated with it. But I actually got to talk with, oh gosh, I think his name's Mike. Um, And he came here a couple of weeks ago to volunteer and help us out with one of our international student ministry events. Um, And he is a retired ag leadership professor. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the difference between ag leadership and that. But he pretty much was talking along the lines you were, especially with servant leadership and how your frame of reference has to be setting up your quote unquote subordinates for success um, and building those personal relationships with them in a way that um, edifies them, in a way that empowers them, in a way that lets them know that they are not just um, a part of the system, but they're also an individual as well and being able to honor you know, their own individual pursuits if you know sally wants more time with her family then you give her more time with your family you know because you're just an understanding manager if you know bill wants um, some mentorship if he wants discipleship in terms of how to move up the corporate ladder and how to build his leadership skills then you sit down and you have a couple of you know lunches with bill and see how that goes um and he really um mike sorry the guy i was talking to was really really big on scripture and he was pulling reference verses you know left and right out of his head about just how radical christ was in his leadership because everybody expected him to be an earthly king everybody expected him to be just like every king that had come before him but i guess slightly more benevolent but the whole point of the person of christ is that he is such a radical departure from everything all of the predecessors that he actually fulfills the law as opposed to throws it in the trash for 500 years until I think Josiah finds it again and is like, wow, we've been doing none of this. Um, he, the person of Christ is just so different, you know, and, and still is so different even when you point to him as a reference. He's kind of the starting point of servant leadership more than just a benevolent king or a benevolent right. dictator because there's been good kings and bad kings and the good kings are really just people who tend to leave the peasants alone and not harass them and torture them but jesus was really the first leader to go amidst the people who were quote unquote his subordinates and and love them and heal them and interact with the people who nobody would even consider to be worthy to look at him or touch him or kiss his feet you know i think john the baptist says i'm not even worthy to untie the dude's sandals you know that's how you know revered he was on earth or how you know he was expected to be revered as just this massive bro. And he was, because he's, I mean, God's kid. So shout out to him. But mm. he he was also just incredibly humble and sets the standard forevermore in terms of what humility looks like. And I can't think of anybody before him or after them, thankfully, that does a better job than him of, of, of wearing... Um, just that just that face of humility in everything that he did. He washed his disciples' feet, which was just, you know, we cliche that and say, oh yeah, he knelt down and he served them. But that was the lowest servant's job. You know, the, the feet were the most unclean part of the body, which Christ himself flips around when he says, blessed are the feet of he who spreads good news. It means even your feet, which are supposed to be the most dirty things about you, are sanctified and made holy. The things that are touching the dirt every second of every day are the things that are going to be made, you know, glorious and that are going to shine in the light of the gospel and the good news. They're going to be used to yeah. spread the good news. Exactly. And so how Christ flips the script and flips the expectations of, of leadership by becoming the servant. I mean, the last among you will be first, the first will be last. There's a million different ways to say it. Um, because I think people could certainly cherry pick and it would, and it would still be scripture, but um, there's a laissez-faire way of servant leadership that's pretty much treat others the way you would want to be treated pretty much don't be that boss that everybody hates because you're asserting your authority in a really you know domineering way 
-hmm. And that's true, but more than just not being a, a mean boss is being a servant leadership or a servant manager or a servant just anything, you know, walking through life and treating other people as, as more than yourself, thinking of yourself less, thinking of the people around you more. I mean, I can't even fathom Christ having a moment of thought to himself where he's thinking about his needs or his desires or his wants. It's constantly, where can I be going to serve other people? He was on the move. He was traveling, just healing left and right, always going to people who needed him. You know, he wasn't the one constantly seeking out, you know, he wasn't the one with the agenda to get him more glory. And I guess he was evidently glorified. And I'm stumbling over my words here, but he just, he just takes our expectations, bro, and flips them on their head every single time when it comes to leadership. Yeah. Uh, I love that you bring that up. I've, I've thought about that many times in class of just being like the ultimate leader that the example that I have is Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, never really had the opportunity to, I guess, to bring it up, but, um, just, yeah, especially specifically with servant leadership, really kind of the, the ultimate of, of just putting others before yourself. And I mean, obviously, that's what the gospel is all about, and that's what love is all about, and that's what Jesus is all about. Um, so, of course, he's going to be the best example that we have. But yeah, I love that you you mentioned that. That's um, mm-hmm. you know a great way to view servant leadership and leadership in general. Yeah, and I feel it's been interesting for me as um, a coach. I guess I'm still working over at Process Christian School. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. them. Go Eagles. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting when you have to humble yourself to people who are significantly younger than you. Yeah. And I've seen it done with my parents and other people's parents, especially time and time again, where they address you as equals and they address you as not just you know friends and they're very nice to you and they're very chummy and they don't care again that laissez-faire mentality but truly seeking to serve you when really at face value they they have no reason to do so you know right. you have yeah. no reason to expect that um your coach would would go out of their way to, to serve you and to go beneath you um in, in making statements and i think that's the most challenging part of or one of the most challenging parts of, of being a coach is knowing that you fundamentally have tools that they do not have that your players don't have trying to equip them with those tools but doing those doing so in a way that lifts them up rather than tears them down in a way that humiliates you you know especially because a lot of times if i'm correcting somebody um it'll be from a place of hey this is what i've done before and i've been really stupid when i've done this but i know you're better than i was I know you can do better. I know you have the potential to to do X, Y, and Z as opposed to the the other way around. Right. Um, and that's, I don't have a huge sample size in terms of, yes, that's the epitome of, of good servant leadership, but it's, it's helped calm my heart um, at the end of the day thinking about, man, am I doing this right? Am I doing this from a good place? Is my posture towards my, my kids and my players a good posture to have? in the long term because there's a part of me that's really really tempted to just be the guy with all the answers but also with all of the ego and all the egotism yeah you know um not that i had a coach that way but i've certainly seen coaches who are that way who i mean rightly because they have a lot of information kind of assert that information as their their beat stick of authority and and wave that around yeah without really an ounce of humility there's kind of the, the the barking coaches yeah um which while you can get a response and while you can certainly get good players um, out of that leadership style, I just, for one, it's not my personality. It's not my personality to bark at people. I'm much more calm than that. Yes, you are. <laughs> um, I, can, I can certainly project, but, man, I just don't have the have it in me to, maybe it's just laziness in a way, to, to, <laughs> to not want to yell at them. Yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely helped me to think about man how would christ approach this situation not just in terms of man how would jesus hit a forehand but how how would jesus approach this i mean fundamentally a child but approach them in a way that is more than just approaching a child to treat them as i mean somebody who is 
worthy of his love? You know, how do I do that, especially when it comes to correction and when it is on one of the days where I'm not in a great mood coming into practice? Because that's certainly a thing. I tell them to leave their days behind, but there are days when I have other stuff going on as well and I'm not exactly in a great mindset to be giving direction or if I feel like my leadership is compromised because my emotions are floating left and right and are unstable just Mm -hmm. because I'm a poor helpless sinner in need of the grace of God but you know definitely Jesus is the only thing I can lean into in those moments to say you know what here's my example regardless of how I feel this is what I need to be thinking about when I even consider leading these kids.